it's time to get ready for the ultimate rugby showdown. From how teams qualified to the kerfuffle around the Rugby World Cup draw, let's dive into everything you need to know before the Rugby World Cup kicks off. The 2023 Rugby World Cup is going to kick off in France on the 8th of September, where 20 of the best teams in the world will go up against each other to find out who's the greatest. The format starts with four pools of five, where the top two proceed to the quarterfinals. Then one leg ties for quarters and semis to then get to a winner-take-all final in the Stade de France on the 28th of October. But how did each team get here? Well, these 12 teams qualified by finishing the top three places of the pool stage of the 2019 World Cup. Georgia and Romania qualified from their placing in the 2021 and 2022 Rugby Europe Championships. There's actually a little bit of drama here because Spain had actually originally qualified, but then they played ineligible players, so they then got kicked out essentially. This isn't even the first time they've done this, so they don't really have anyone to blame but themselves. Samoa so qualified as Oceania 1 by beating Tonga on aggregate in home and away playoffs. Tonga then later qualified for the Asia Oceania playoff by beating the Cook Islands. And in that playoff, they beat Hong Kong to qualify for the Rugby World Cup. Namibia won African qualifying, which definitely doesn't happen pretty much every year. But actually, to be fair, they made a bit of tough work around it this time. They still topped their group in African qualifying, but it was only in points difference, and they actually lost their first game to the Ivory Coast. But they did win the final 36-0 against Kenya. The next two teams came from the Americas, with Uruguay qualifying by beating the USA in the South America versus North America 1 playoff. The USA then went on to play Chile, who were the winner of the South America 2 versus North America 2 playoff. Chile beat the USA across two legs and qualified for their first ever World World Cup. And also for the first time ever, we have three South American teams in the competition. But the USA weren't out of it yet. They still had the repishage. This involved the runners up of Asia Pacific and Africa, third place in the Rugby Europe Championship, and the losers of the Americas 2 playoff. These teams were Hong Kong, Kenya, Portugal, and the USA. Each team played each other in a mini league that took place in the United Arab Emirates at the end of last year. The final game saw Portugal come up against the USA, who had both won the previous two games. Portugal would draw the game with a last minute penalty, but due to a superior points difference, they qualified for the Rugby World Cup. So yeah, three teams got past World Rugby's golden boys, the USA, to qualify for the Rugby World Cup. This giant must be very, very sleepy. Okay, so now we know every team playing in this tournament. So let's take a look at the pools. Oh, and you need to remember to be angry at World Rugby because of how they did the draw. So the draw was done in December of 2020, but they used the world rankings to conduct the draw from November of 2019, right after the last World Cup finish. And so this has meant that currently in Pool B, at the time of recording, you have three of the top five, whereas in Pool C, the top seed is currently ranked ninth in the world. However, it has made the pool stage slightly more interesting than normal, because in pretty much every pool, I think there's three teams who think they can get out of it. So that is potentially the only positive of this. Perhaps the only pool where three teams aren't realistically looking to try and get out of it is Pool A, which consists of France, New Zealand, Italy, Namibia, and Uruguay. Sorry Italy, I really do love you guys, but I just think beating France or New Zealand is probably just a bit above your ceiling right now, especially considering how good New Zealand have looked in the rugby championship this year, and also France being the world number two and playing at home. So yeah, France and New Zealand are probably expected to get out of this pool. In pool B, we have Scotland, Ireland, South Africa, Tonga, and Romania, which really is the pool of a death. At the time of recording, Scotland, South Africa, and Ireland are all in the top five, and Tonga have also recently, with the new change in eligibility laws, been able to pick a bunch of ex-All Blacks, like uh, Charles Piatal, for example, and Israel Flau, who might not be a particularly nice guy, but he is a very good rugby player. We would probably expect to see South Africa and Ireland leave this group, unfortunately for me. In Pool C, we have Wales, Australia, Fiji, Georgia, and Portugal. Wales and Australia should finish in the top two of this pool, but Australia have been pretty poor in the Rugby Championship. They didn't win a single game in it, and Georgia have a fairly recent victory over the Welsh from last November. I know they have a new coach now, but they didn't look convincing in the Six Nations Wales, so we'll have to see what they look like in these World Cup warm-ups. And Fiji, the year before that, did put up a very convincing performance against Wales, even though they were down a man for 75 minutes. Now, unfortunately, Portugal probably aren't going to win a game in this group. Australia do have Eddie Jones as the new head coach, who is one of the best head coaches of all time, but they haven't done great under him so far. But will he repeat what he did in 2003 with them and take them to another World Cup final? But you 
should expect to see Wales and Australia get out of this group, but I think Fiji and Georgia are going to do everything they can to stop them. In Pool D, we have England, Japan, Argentina, Samoa, and Chile. So this is again another interesting pool. England sacked Teddy Jones at the end of last year and didn't have a particularly good Six Nations off the back of it. Argentina have done pretty good in the Rugby Championship. Um, it's just finished at the time of recording. They beat Australia. They did get pretty heavily smashed by New Zealand and they just lost to South Africa in the end. They really need to be taken seriously in this World Cup, as they always should, because they historically have overperformed at World Cups. And now their expected level is probably a quarter final or a semi final. So is their overperformance at a World Cup going to be a final and going to be winning it? Who knows? But you should probably expect to see England and Argentina get out of this group. Japan will probably be looking at that saying, we can get out of this group. We got out of the group in 2019. We should have got out of the group in 2015. They're the only team to ever win three games in a World Cup pool stage and to not progress to the quarterfinals. They did, however, lose to Samoa, another team in this pool, in the Asia Pacific Cup. So are they at the best they can be? I personally, as a Scotland fan, will choose to never write off Japan at a Rugby World Cup. And I'm sure South African fans will agree with me that they will definitely be looking to push out of this group. Japan do benefit from some stability though, because of course England, like I said, have that new coach. Argentina's coach, Michael Czechia, only took over for the Rugby Championship in 2022. So they do have some stability with their coach being in place since 2016. Also keep a watch on the magnificent Chile number 10, Rodrigo Fernandez. He's a very special talent for this Chile team. So the strongest teams going to this championship are probably France and Ireland, and maybe New Zealand have put themselves in that camp too now with recent results. Ireland are off the back of a Six Nations Grand Slam, which means they won every game, with France having won the Grand Slam in 2022, and New Zealand had just did a clean sweep in the, the Rugby Championship. They normally don't win the Rugby Championship in World Cup years. The last time they did that was in 2007. So maybe this is a sign that they're coming in some very good form right now. The other Southern Hemisphere teams are interesting. South Africa in a very difficult side of the draw where Scotland will probably be targeting them specifically as a game to try and win. You've also got Australia who could get to a semi-final fairly comfortably along with teams like Wales and Argentina as well but Australia and South Africa have looked pretty lackluster in this rugby championship. With how the draw is made it's extremely unbalanced pools there's a chance that England or Australia could get to a semi-final who knows but France are currently the odds-on favorites for the Rugby World Cup as it is their home World Cup and they are looking fantastic. However they don't have a great record in World Cup finals they've been to three of them and lost all of them. If you want to find out who I think is going to win and I think all these pools are going to finish don't forget to subscribe because I will be doing my full predictions video in a couple of weeks so who are the dark horses in this tournament with the state of the pools you can maybe say England or Australia are dark horses but I'm going to talk about more traditional dark horses and in, in the way of teams who are sort of performing really well but kind of going under the radar a bit and for me there's really two of them and this is Argentina and Scotland. Scotland do have that downside of being in a very difficult side of the draw. They'd have a very good Six Nations, they ended off 2022 well and Argentina have improved massively under Michael Cheka with having a very strong rugby championship for them getting that one win very narrowly losing to South Africa. The World Cup is an extremely exciting time for rugby and it's hard to believe that the first one only came around in 1987. If you want to learn more about the history of the Rugby World Cup you can check out this video right here. Thanks for watching.